What's going on guys? I'm Brandon with the TRT community and today we're combining HCG and testosterone into one syringe. This is the TRT community podcast where we discuss all things testosterone. Thanks for listening today, guys. I appreciate you downloading. Uh, I just want to say really quickly, if you like what we're doing here, give us a rating. That's um, that's a one way to get us seen by others is to rate and review the show. If you hate it, don't rate it. Today, I want to talk a little bit about TRT and HCG. Uh, I want to say first that I am not a doctor. I am not the authority. What I do is talk about topics that may be controversial, and I just want to kind of give two different sides of of those topics. Um, I'm not really here to argue for the most part, Um, but that said, I've got an issue with this topic specifically. Combining testosterone and HCG into the same syringe. It's something I bring up on our Facebook page every so often, maybe a few times a year, and for the most part, I get a lot of bro science responses. Nobody will answer scientifically why it's not something they'll do. Uh, One of the most common answers starts with the word gear. What I hear often is gear is meant for intramuscular injections and HCG is sub-Q. Honestly, when when, when you start your sentence with the word gear, I stop listening. I'm not interested in what you do with gear. I'm talking about testosterone replacement therapy. Uh, I, I think that logic is old school, and I think it starts with the word gear. It's just an old school mentality. Um, it, it bothers me because whenever, I mean, the obvious answer is, you know, listen to our last episode about TRT and subcutaneous injections. When somebody says the word gear and says it's for intramuscular only, it's it's just, it's old school. I've said it, you know, 12 times already, but it's old science and many, many research studies already debunk it. Testosterone can be done and often is better in sub-Q injections. Uh, The second argument I get often is that an uh, aqueous-based substance and an oil-based never mix. You know, my my honest reply most of the time to a guy that says this, and usually they say water and oil don't mix, we're not baking a cake. I don't care if they mix. That's irrelevant. Um, most recently I I received a response on the Facebook page that said something like, Jesus, hell no, you don't. Um, I followed up with this gentleman and, and asked for a a more detailed explanation. And I will say that, you know, at least, at least he formed, uh, an argument that, that I hadn't really seen before. And, and like I said, I don't agree or disagree with this. I just want to kind of put it out there that I do it and it can be done successfully. So this gentleman, um, he went on to say, uh, instead of saying oil and water don't mix, he said you don't combine non-miscible substances. And honestly, that's just a smarter way of saying oil and water don't mix. But he also went on to talk about, um, you know, how there is a protocol, and that's not it. Uh, And there is truth to that. It's not science, and and in a perfect science scenario, you probably wouldn't do it. but to be fair, you know, his argument about it not being protocol was primarily based on the fact that you don't want to cross-contaminate, you know, HCG into testosterone or vice versa, which I stand behind. He's not wrong. Um, to be fair, I do use a new needle. So I draw from my testosterone vial, change the needle, draw from my HCG vial. Again, he's not wrong. It's not perfect science. It's not a perfect sterile environment. Um, but you know, I'm okay with it mostly because I really hate needles. And if I can get away with one injection, I'm all for it. Uh, specifically what I do is, like I said, I draw the testosterone first, get a new needle, draw the HCG. The reason that I draw the testosterone first is because whenever you draw the HCG second, it stays separated well in the syringe. So the first half of the injection is all HCG. It's all aqueous base in it. And it, I have, you know, I don't have to push nearly as hard on the syringe, on the plunger. 
Um, whenever you draw the HCG first and then the testosterone second, you'll end up with the lava lamp scenario. The, the testosterone, as it comes in, just kind of drops and clumps and, and looks like a lava lamp. And when you do that, you'll, you know, you're pushing the plunger along just fine. And then all of a sudden you'll hit a pocket of HCG and your pressure will shoot it in like a power washer. So it just, it just makes more sense if you're going to try it to draw the T first. That way you get a nice even separation within the syringe. There, you know, there are smarter guys than me that will either sign off on this or at the very worst, they won't say it shouldn't or couldn't be done. Uh, Dr. Rand McLean has a video on YouTube where he talks about this specifically. And while he doesn't necessarily support it, I kind of got the impression that he wasn't supporting it from a science standpoint, but that, you know, it, if it was something that he basically said, if it works, go for it. There's a lot of guys that say it works. It's no big deal. Um, the science won't tell you that it is harmful. Um, so, you know, that, that gave me hope. There are other guys, you know, that, that are, that are for it. Um, you can do some research and, and find out, you know, the exact science behind it. What else? Yeah. You know, it really, I guess the, the reason that I wanted to kind of put this out there is not to try to argue that you should be doing it this way or shouldn't be doing it this way. You know, this isn't like my passion for all men needing HCG. Uh, I just, it bothers me whenever the arguments from the questions that I pose are old school bro science. You know, whenever, whenever the only answer that I can be given is, it, you know, testosterone is supposed to be done intramuscularly like that read up. That's just not the case. Yeah. So anecdotally, I've been doing this for a couple of years, uh, if not longer. And, you know, it saves me on syringes, which I know is minimal. It saves holes in my body, which is great. But more realistically, it's just more convenient for me. And it hasn't been an issue. Uh, the the two substances stay separated in the syringe. You inject them into it. For me, I inject them subcutaneously and they stay separate inside my body. They absorb separately. It, it's, it's a non-issue. Um, there's, in my opinion, there's no added, um, the odds aren't heightened that I'm going to get some sort of infection, injection site, um, soreness or pain or anything like that. Other than the fact that you know, anytime you're pulling a needle out and putting a needle back in, you know, it's not quite sterile. But if you want to try it, you didn't hear it from me. Thank you for listening to the TRT Community Podcast. You can find us online at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TRT Community. 